right. Welcome back to the Board Drill Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Kyle, here with my co-host, Matt. Tonight, we have a special guest, Coach Mitch Johnson, who is the former head coach of Northwood High School um, up in North Carolina. Right now, he's currently going through a transition. He's about to come on as the head coach somewhere else, but can't talk about it right now. We got a full gag order that came in through lawyers called everything. So, Coach, welcome to the show. We appreciate having you on. Hey, I appreciate y'all having me on. I'm excited. Huge, huge fan of you guys. Um, <laughs> when you guys reached out, I was super excited about joining on and uh, just hoping I can give give back to something uh, to your guys' podcast. Yeah, we appreciate it. Uh, you know, for coaches that listening, uh, a lot of people ask me, like, well, how do you guys choose guests? I'm like, look, we do it two ways. Someone follows us on Twitter, and I normally DM them about 20 minutes later. Or someone reaches out and uh, they don't believe it. I'm like, look, we're looking for coaches that have something to teach all across the country. If you're a coach out there and you feel like you have something to teach other coaches, we are a platform for you. It's not a platform for me and Matt. We're here to help coaches and connect them with other coaches where they can learn football. Uh, one day me and Matt will talk football, but you know, until then, we're going to find a lot better football coaches. Uh, when we get to the bottom of the barrel, we'll talk. Speaking of that, if you're listening, if you're watching, if you're on YouTube, smash that like button, hit subscribe. We need to catch Coach Johnson on YouTube followers. All right. He is crushing us in like three months. So our new goal is to beat Coach Johnson. We're going to have a nice competitive nature here. He's probably going to get more followers than us because they're going to be like, that guy knows mesh and these idiots just talk. So without further ado, Coach, after that long intro, we're going to go ahead and let you take it away and teach us some mesh tonight. So go ahead and hit that share button and we'll roll. Yes, sir. Please work, please work, please work. And then let's just do the whole entire screen, you said, right? Yeah. yeah. Boom. And am I good? Ah, it worked. Boom. There we go. Perfect. So in case you're wondering, the last couple of shows we've had an issue with sharing, so we're happy to get it going. So here we go with Perfect. Mesh. All right. Um. So here we go. So our most basic version. All right. So we're going to kind of talk about our two outside receivers, which – we call Z, Z and X, and Z um, stays on our right side, X stays on our left side. Uh, what we do is it's a um, six step, or when we kind of, we figure it out based on all the reps we do in spring ball in the summer. Um, and once the quarterback and receivers get on the same page, we kind of talk about it as the original mesh of a six step, um, but I'm more of a yardage guy. So we kind of do eight to 10, that way that when the quarterback feels like he's got that, it's almost like an automatic first down um, nice little throw out to the Z or the X. Um, so it's a eight to speed cut to 10. Um, and so that's the quarterback's actually pre-snap first read is whether it's on the right or left. So then what we do is we now bring this running back. And if the quarterback thinks that he has a great matchup on the right side, he'll place him on the right side. If he likes on the left, he'll go to the left. And what the running back's got is a swing. So what we do is we go a pre-snap one to our out then to our mesh, and then to our swing. So now we're going to kind of talk about our mesh. So if the once the receivers take a look, then they have to always take a look back at the quarterback so they see where the running back is lined up. So if the running back is lined up on the right side, that means that our Y is going to set the mesh at 6, and our H is simply going to go underneath. So Coach Johnson, why is that? Well, we're going to run at 6 or to the linebacker's toes because what we're trying to do is this Y is going to kind of rub that linebacker and getting his vision so that the H can come underneath. And now if you can see is we have a one, so that's going to be an automatic one. If he likes that throw, if he comes off of it and does not like it, then we hit the running back as quickly as possible. And it lets the mesh develop where if they're playing man, he'll come all the way out here. So that's why we like to do that eight to 10 is now you kind of have like a three level horizontal um, and vertical displacement for the defense. And you put a strain on that corner in the alley defender. So, okay, so coach, real quick. Sir. So you you're telling your guys, right? If I'm the H or the Y, I've got to look back and find out if the running back is to my side because I'm the guy setting the mesh. If that's if that's true, correct? Yep. Because then you're the three. You're part of the three man uh, combo, and that means that you have to that we want you to get there for the quarterback to have three reads on that side. Gotcha. Okay. Yep. And so then what happens is so like right here would go one two H would be your three, and then Y would be number four. Um, so this is pretty much canceled out. You will not come back to this side except for to this backside mesh, which I'll be honest, we started at the end of the year, we started taking a look at this backside mesh because people started picking up on that running back and everybody going here Well, everybody would flow. And then this yeah. guy would just kind of hang out right here with the cornerback. This linebacker would get 
you know, he would get a little nosy and all of a sudden he's wide open. Um, so we would come back down to our number four if we got enough pass pro. Um, I don't like to just sit one person in um, to add to a six-man pass pro. Well, I like to get five receivers out there and making the defense have to keep up with them. Um, so, yeah, so what we'll do is, like I said, is one down to two, down to three. So now when it comes to the mesh, we want them to get to where their shoulders are pretty much rubbing. You know, you hear about the hand clapping, which we start doing that uh, all the way through until we get into the season. And then if I see that we're not doing a good job with it, we'll go back to our hand clap um, as they're meshing at this point. Um, otherwise, we want their shoulders to be really next to each other, and then they are looking at each other. So H is taking a look at this linebacker or anybody in this area. Y has got his eyes over here. They know that they are not going to, even if they're blitzing, they're not getting the ball thrown until they're at least past the center line. So what they're doing is that they're taking a look at the, at the players that are responsible in this part right here. So if H sees that this linebacker is chasing Y, he knows that it's man, he's yelling, go, 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 go. And so H is going to keep running his so that they're communicating, so that they know they're on the same page, that they've got um, man responsibilities for running mesh. If they're running zone and the linebackers are um, – are dropping out, then they know that they have to get at least to the hash before, um, or that's the, sorry, that they, that is the furthest that they can go out to is right here, right outside the hash is where they can sit. Otherwise they can sit from here to in here, especially if linebackers, which we face a lot. Um, we face a lot of cover eight and a lot of linebackers dropping and, or they would go chasing the running back. So that we would sit right here or what we have, what you can do. And we, um, it, I wouldn't do that from the first install. It's something as you start working with uh, mesh, your players develop, but you can actually start getting to where your receivers, and I'll do it right here, your receivers can expand up through here because if you think about it, if the corners are right here and your safeties come and jump this mesh, there's nothing right here. And so you'll see on a couple of our clips where as soon as our guys start meshing, they'll go up right here and there's a wide open window and we make some big plays out of it. Um, now is that so, mainly taught like against one high, two high, like what are you guys specifically talking about when you can fade? Um, so pretty much like, uh, we, we talk about with kind of that one high. So, cause we try to see what the safety's eyes are doing and if they're, uh, what's it called if they're, um, if their eyes are cheating or if their body is starting to go to one direction, we kind of let that other guy, we kind of let them fade. And if, you know, we, we've picked a lot of people apart and you'll see it in a couple of our playoff films is um, if this safety is just staying back or if he starts chasing to the right or left, you saw that we started expanding up instead of just going horizontal. We yeah. started kind of doing a little bit at an angle. So not just a straight vertical release, but, you know, like at an angle and, and our guys are a lot of them are basketball players. So they had a really good feel for finding that open space in that green grass. Yeah. Um. So yeah, so that does. Do you guys have any questions on the progression or any of um, any questions on the mesh? No, it makes sense, Matt. All right, perfect, Coach. So now you're you're, uh, you're out breaking route, Coach, on the outside yes, from your X and your Z. What are you uh, teaching them to break out? Are you doing it as amount of steps or yardage? Yeah, so you know um, when you go back to the mummy and leech, they would do the six step corners, and I'm not big on steps because our guys will. Man, I'm telling you, they, you know, I'd rather them just look at their landmark for the yards. So we do eight to 10. Um, that way that if, you know, when we're completing this, it's an automatic, you know, first down. Um, and then, cause what we want is we want the, we want the corners to come up and play press because then we'll run our four verts. Um, we'll run our normal mesh and then we'll run mesh post wheel. We'll, we'll start using some motion. Um, what we don't want is people just sitting in these zones. And so we'll try to take that every time that, uh, they give it to us. Yeah, and if you get pressed, are you going to try to convert that to anything, or are you going to keep that out route no matter what? So if we start getting pressed, I'll run. I'll go into mesh post wheel, um, and I'll go into that. Um, actually, you know what? Let me. I'll just show you what we do with that. Um, okay. We'll go into when we see a lot of start getting a lot of man. Is we'll go into our mesh post wheel, um, which we have. We can run a two by two. Can can y'all see both versions of it? Yeah. 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 So what we'll do is we'll start, we can go two by two and we'll designate to the right or the left. If you're the mesh post wheel, um, then you have our three by one, which will be the mesh post wheel will be on one side. And then we'll run that, that rail route with our running back. And then we'll also do some long motion into either 
two by two into three by one or three by one and two by two to see if it is man. And then um, when our quarterbacks here, uh, like anytime we tag anything on top of it, so like this is mesh. So once they see that post wheel, they know that means that, hey, it's a, Coach Johnson's letting me take a shot. I'm going to take, I'm going to go deep and then come down to my short um, progressions. Uh, so that's what we do when we get man. Cause if you can tell, you know, a post route's a great man beater. Cause we'll give that little head nod or to the out route. We'll get a little head nod and then into our post route. And then we also have our um, wheel route. And then obviously mesh is, you know, the best man beater known to man. So. Absolutely. With that. Yes, yeah. sir. All right. I will show some film of our normal mesh and then I'll come back to our uh, talking our different variations. So I um, wanted to show you a couple of our, like on our timing on our out. So this is, um, I just, this is a, an example of a kid that he um, ended up transferring to us and had only been playing for a couple of weeks. But this is why we love our outs because we work on this so much during the, during this re regular season, during practice, you know, I mean, he comes in and he completes this, you know, boom, and our quarterback is taught before he even gets out of his his cut that he should be able to hit this out route. And then there it is. And now you're just out there in space and you're making them have to tackle you. So this is a kid that only been playing a couple of weeks. Um, we matter of fact, I think he played one JV game and then started just playing varsity. Um, and this is him just hitting an out route. And this is our backup quarterback because our quarterback uh, right here, where is he? Our quarterback right here, um, who was one of the top quarterbacks in the nation, like number 12 at one point for the amount of touchdowns in the year. Um, he hurt his hamstring on a 45 run on the first play from scrimmage. So this is our sophomore quarterback who also ended up being all conference, um, you know, throwing it to a kid that only been playing for two weeks. And this is it for the uh, conference title. You know, so we, we worked our out route a lot. And then I'll give you a couple more examples of hitting Coach, our out. Yep. On your out route, what are you teaching the quarterback? When does he know to go ahead and sling that out route out there? Um, right off that, right off that back step, he can take one. He can take one step since we're we're usually toes on the five. Um, we'll have him. He can take. We don't do more than like one to three steps, but this is as he can take one step, or if he feels comfortable because they're not giving a lot of pressure. As soon as he's on that back foot, he can kind of, kind of eye it up, get the shoulder square, and throw a dart in there. So kind of one step or like this kid right here, uh, Grayson, as soon as he got on that back foot, boom, you see that? And then just put, he threw his, threw all into it. So it's kind of a thousand one. As soon as that snap thousand one, looking to release it now. And you see that our receiver, and this is, you saw the timing, look, and our receiver here expanded, I think about two yards too short. And he wants to throw it now. But then, because we work on this, and I think Zay was trying to get to that first down mark, and he got, and you could tell that he had to, you know, come back <clears throat> off of it. Yeah, if you can, Coach, sorry, I didn't remind you before this. If you hold down that button, it'll slow mode on QuickTime. That's usually the best way for us to see it clean from our end. Oh, so that's perfect. Which one? If you hold down the play button, like with your cursor, it'll slow mo it. Like hold it down, like click and hold. Oh, like this? Yeah. So slow mo is going to give us the cleanest for our viewers and for us. So perfect, perfect. yeah. Hey, All yeah. right. So yeah. that's that. That's one another example of the out. Um, and then so I'll show you right here for an example. You know, because I'm big on coaching and showing. So this is what happened earlier in the year because our quarterback, like you just asked, you know, he knew when to th he was trying to throw it, and our receiver went a little bit too deep with it. So he wants to throw it and his head's not turned, but our quarterback knows that that's when he's got to throw it. So if that makes sense. Um, and now I'll show you some of our mesh, uh, some of our matter of fact, let me go back to our, here we go. Um, so we'll go to uh, watching our middle of our mesh here. So these guys, Coach, got can the you maximize route. that for us too? Sorry. Yeah. Yes, sir. Sorry about that. No, you're good. Uh, so th both of these outside guys have outs. And you'll see our quarterback could probably have thrown that every time. Um, but I think they started falling in love with the mesh. And here's what I'm talking about is with the one high safety. And so this is our kid right here that's going NC State. Um, in that, the slot? Yep, yeah, right in the slot because I, I bring him in. So we're always like at 10 and a half personnel. You know, people talk about 10 and 11. Well, I mean, dude, he could be out in the slot and also come into 
a sniffer and wing and tight end and running back. So, um, so people pay a lot of attention. You'll see that um, we use that to our advantage. So right here, what you're going to see is we call this spread tight. So we try to cut our splits. Normally, when we're running mesh, we want them about two or three yards off the top of the numbers. But when I call tight, we want them a couple yards outside the hash. This way that if you take a look, this is a one-on-one -on -one matchup. If this guy misses him on, on an out route, we're going to the house. But I also like to tighten it up because our mesh hits a little bit faster. And it also allows our running back to expand out more. And people lose track of their um, of the running back. So you'll see the mesh work here. They sat and then boom, you saw three guys on one. They ran into each other. And now you had nice open mesh. And so we'll run it back. So what would you say predominantly is the coverage that you see kind of in your area? Is it all over the place? Do you guys get one high cover three? Do you get any kind of too high? Yeah, we, man, you'll, you'll, um, you'll be surprised by the different stuff we see. We very rarely, this was the first time we saw a single high safety. Um, we even saw the three deep safeties. Yeah. So we saw three deep safeties where they also try to take away the middle of the field. They took away our try to take away our mesh. Matter of fact, that one film where I showed where um, our quarterback hit the out, what they were doing is they were kind of doing a, a three, three stack. So they were going three down linemen and then three backers, three high safeties, and then their two corners. They were trying to take away our four verts and they're trying to take mesh and shallow cross away. So we yeah. just ran the ball and hit, hit them on stick. Um, and then we also have teams that, uh, they were trying to bring six people at all at every every play, and so we just hit a lot of running back um, swings, some uh, some wheel routes, and I'll show that in a little bit. Um, but we saw a lot of a lot of different things, man. And there was yeah. times when we just see it saw like a drop eight. So there's there's that one, and then our um, the same drive. This is our playoff game, um, and so now you'll see where you just saw where Gus kind of got triple covered but then they ran into each other and he expanded up to get open. Now you're going to see our other slot do this. So this was, um, we ran mesh the entire series down the field. <laughs> yeah. I, I troll people sometimes. It's the old, if they can't stop it, huh? Yep. And so you see right there, they expanded with Gus and now one-on-one -on -one with the safety. And so this is a bunch of basketball kids, man. Like a lot of these kids are basketball players at heart. But you see. Well, they're the best football players in the country are basketball players that realize Absolutely. that they're football players. And so you see nice expanded. I just want you to take a look. Look at how wide open the outs were open as well. Yeah. Boom, out right now, out right now, and just one-on-one -on -one with the safety. Um, And then you guys got any questions quick? No, it makes sense. I mean, it's <laughs> <laughs> people struggling to play mesh along with you pushing and everything. It's, uh, you know, I mean, I, from my background, we ran a lot of too high kind of palms, if you will, yeah. or to read. Yeah. And mesh is something we have to work. Cause right. We have to push the overhang on the back. And then once the overhang is pushed, the mic can no longer give something across his face that direction. So he's got to know, I got to take anything through. And then the will got to know, has to know I'm the only guy left. I have to take the other through. So it's um it's a complex play to chase on defense. So I, I absolutely and so then quite a bit. What um and then so this was in the first half, and we just kept dumping it to our running backs because they weren't bringing a lot of pressure. And you have you see one, two, three, four, five, six. They have seven guys they're dropping into coverage, and so we just kept dumping it to our running back. And now you saw our adjustment usually was teams were like they would get frustrated because we would either hit in our stick, our swing, or our snag. Yeah. Um, that's how we would build people up because then all of a sudden, instead of just like, all right, we'll just give them that five, six, seven yards, they want to take it away. And now we're hitting our mesh, hitting our four verts. So here's what we're what we do with our swing. Um, we kind of teach our running backs to go swing to wheel. So right now he's open, he cuts it up. And now our quarterback could have been a little bit more patient here, and our running back could have expanded more. Um, but their linebacker did a great job, but then didn't make a tackle. And so now a nice easy throw, and we end up with you know, 12 or, you know, about 10 yards. So yeah. that's our normal mesh stuff. Um, now I want to get into our, some of our different variations. So here's one of our main variations is mesh post wheel. Um, we have the opportunity to run it out of a two by two, which we just designate right or left. Um, and so then what would happen here, I'm just going to keep in this version if that works for y'all. Um, yeah. So like right here, as you can tell, is we have mesh post wheel call to the right. 
And so what we have is that the Y is going to set the mesh at six or the toes of the linebacker. H is coming underneath. Why is that? Because now we're going one, two to three. Yeah. Um, and then even, and we, I can even tell our quarterback, Hey, their, their corner is staying with the, they're not passing it on very well. Um, with the, the post into going from the corner to the safety, they're not communicating. We can go one down to two, down to three. So either way, but normally our quarterback takes at that post because we see a nice hole right there where he'll hit them in stride. Um, and so then H gets underneath there. Now, just because I call it to the right doesn't mean that our quarterback has to take it. He can go to the left if he likes this matchup. And so then it would go one to two to three. So he knows that if he takes the side that only has the two, he's got the pre-snap one, and now he's reading the mesh for his two and his three. Um, now right here on the three by one, now what you see is that now you're cutting your split down of your receiver. And I like to do this. Um, and our running backs running a wheel. So you got double wheels because normally a corner, you know, a defense will either bring that corner all the way in here and he's trying to see what's happening here. Well, now all of a sudden he's got that mesh. That guy's coming here. So now he's got to choose. Am I going to take the running back on this swing? Because we, like I said, we start off where it looks like a swing and then it's 100% going between the numbers and the sideline. Yeah. And if you're not, if you hesitate for a second, that's going to be a big play. And I have some examples of that. Um, or are you going to let us take the mesh? And then obviously you have your post wheel on that side. Hey, Matt, uh, what, what do I do when they can press the backside single receiver? Blitz the corner. Blitz the corner. There we go. All right. <laughs> so now let me ask you this. Um, so then if that happens, so who's take, who's taking that running back out there? Uh, for us, the safety is able to give the under. He's going to pat. He's going to end up taking the running back and then the linebacker out. It's a weird switch that we make. It's not a day one thing. It's like a day twenty seven thing. It's um, a we're playing mesh with the rail and the wheel this week. This is yep. how we're going to pass it off. So perfect, yeah, coach. Exactly. It's a it's a running gag because I install corner blitz on day one because I think it's the best blitz in football. So I love it, especially if you're in the boundary, <laughs> right? If yeah, you boundary, can't tell you, you how many guy. OCs I've pissed off on the first day of spring by showing corner blitz. So you want what's funny is in our scrim when I was up in Wisconsin and it was the COVID year. We had this kid that was playing corner for us. I was like 6'2", um, super lengthy. And in our scrimmage, this team just kept running jet um, to the field. And then their, they would run this quarterback um, power read play action type play. Yep. And so I was like, you know, they, they beat us once on it. But I was like, all right, we can, we'll, we'll handle this. If they're just going to – we were saying vanilla. So actually we would go – we would call it sniper. And that means that the corner's coming from the boundary – and he just, just auto check it every time. Yep. Do what? Auto check it off that jet motion. Yeah. Yep. And the quarterback, he, and I hate to say this, but he ended up being out for the rest of the year. I mean, he just took a freaking shot. Um, but yeah, I, I'm with you. I love, I love the quarterback <laughs> blitz. It count, it's sudden coach. It is sudden for quarterbacks. They're not really sure when that little fast guy comes. No. And then that little fast guy gets, sees that quarterback. And so he's going to make sure that the quarterback feels it. Oh yeah. Um, and then, like I said, we have this two, we have the three by one where we'll go two to two, uh, two by two. And what he's running is now he's getting that full sprint and now he's running a wheel. And now if they're, if your team doesn't communicate with going from a trips to a, a two by two, well, then if they don't see this running back and they don't communicate, so now he's either wide open on the wheel or now the running back is coming off that edge. Um, and what we try to do is he's really trying to pick anybody that can. Uh, get to the running back, and then yeah. he's obviously running his post. And so if the safety comes screaming over the top, now you got a shot play. Coach, this one may be my favorite out of what you've shown, just thinking as a defensive guy. So you guys start, obviously, your trips, and then the single's compressed, yep. and then you bring the, the number three in jet motion. He's going to end up around the wheel. you got the mesh from your regular two guys, and then the quarter, and then the running back's coming with the wheel slash rail, whatever, out of the backfield. This one I like because there's a lot of action going one direction and back the other. And for a defense, this one could be really tricky. So this is this is one I like to see on film because it's uh, it's one of those where you got to prepare all week for it. It's a, it's a good variation. Yeah, and then and then what I also to try and like mix with it is we like to go, um, you know, we love to. So what we show a lot is going two to two by two to three by one. Yeah, um, and then he's running the wheel or he's running an arrow when it comes to our stick or our snag, you know, all that good stuff. So now all of a sudden to have him go from the three by one, to two by two. Um, I, I think I still have that one. 
on there where we actually when we hit him and uh for you know he should have kept going you'll see he settled right here on the sidelines he should have kept going he would have had a touchdown um so that's our our mesh post wheel and we like to run that a lot out of um when people are seeing man like i said earlier and so yeah. i'll go over and show you a couple of our film for that one so here's our two by two to three by one and it's the one that let me maximize, maximize the coach yep and then here we have our motion getting there and he should have kept going, but you see that they kind of lose him. Yeah. And he should have been wide open, but then even our back, our mesh was wide open as well. It's such a hard transition when people motion into trips on the fly and snap the ball and throw concepts for a coverage. Um, yeah. We it's just not, uh, if you're not a spot, you right. If you're a spot drop team, it's whatever you do, whatever your terrible spot drop is. But I've always been a match, a, a zone match team, and it's it's a tough deal to teach your kids this right here. And then one thing that we'll do, um, and it here I'll come back to it is if we're going two by two to three by one, sometimes we won't cut this receiver split down. And now watch how he kind of drifts here. And I'd like to hit the mesh a little bit. He him get to the mesh a little bit faster. But I want you to watch this kid end up being wide open, and we end up actually hitting it later in the game. And we run we also went three by one and we ran snag to the three by one side and we hit him on a slant. But watch how they lose track of him. Look at that. Yeah, I mean it kind of turns into leak almost, you know, yeah, what like people leak call leak. Like wide you know, which is my ever living nightmare as a DC. So Matt, make <laughs> sure we make sure we take out the term leak from this entire podcast. <laughs> um and then let's see, here's a good mesh post wheel one. And we just took a shot. So this is where they know that they have a chance to take a shot. Now, I'd rather them hit the wheel. But, I mean, this was a big time. This changed this kid's season. I mean, after that, he went on and had, score, uh, had like eight touchdown rece eight receiving touchdowns. Yeah, but he got right by. I mean. You know, three by one. We love the mesh post wheel. Um, and now I'll show you some of the running back coming out of the backfield for it. Um, here we go. And then now the running back coming from behind. So was that motion of trips there too? And then obviously yeah. you're throwing running back back to the single side. Yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, we hit this a couple of times because uh, a lot on people, because for some reason, you know, and you saw right here, I don't know why this guy's going with them because they're not really playing man. Yeah. Um, but that happened it's, a lot, you know, it's eye candy coach. I mean, it's, you're, you're still right. playing against 16, 17 year old kids. And I tell the story all the time of how all week long we've worked with the kid and like, this is what you do. This is what you do. This is what you do. And then on Friday night, the lights come on and the dumbass does something different. And it's <laughs> Matt's um, done it a hundred times. I mean, you know, we could probably sit here and say the same names, but, uh, we won't for the sake of the podcast. And then here it is again. This is without no motion. The mesh is wide open, but then there's the wheel. Both wheels, if you take a look on on the back side, they had no idea, I mean, what, what we were running here. So it's third down. We run an arrow into a wheel. Yeah, his eyes are in the backfield. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I can't tell you how much I teach kids, um, and, and I'll go on and I'll say this in front of every coach. We are a zone match team and with a lot of, you know, kind of mannish principles, we teach our guys to turn their backs to the quarterback all the time in coverage. And I don't care because for that reason, we always tell them if you're staring at the quarterback, you're going to watch a completion. Absolutely. Stop doing it. And then, so here's a uh, big time play for us where we just run that, you know, it started off as a swing into a wheel and just a big play for us. So, so that's again right to the tight side away from the trips. Yep. And this is and this once again is no motion. Um and I thought we did a good job. Our split was really good. What I'd like to see it a little bit tighter. Um yeah. but what we had seen cuz I think this was our third drive. We had already scored two or something like that, but this was this team actually ended up um this was their first year of football. They ended up going to like the third or fourth round of the playoffs, but we beat them uh like 59 to 6 or something like that. Um, but if you take a look at that, you know, and they had a backer on that running back and I'll take my running back over a linebacker any day over a will. 
Yeah. So. Yeah, that's, that. I mean, right there. And like you said, sometimes the difference between cutting down the split, not cutting down the split, if you cut it down too much, sometimes it's an indicator, right? Yeah. And I know this guy's under. Bad. Usually if someone goes under, someone comes out. And we teach our kids that all the time defensively. We're like, look, if he's cutting a split down for a reason, he's probably going across the field. In football, very rarely does someone go across and no one comes back. Absolutely. And so that's usually an indicator. So I, I'm with you, you know, the difference of, how far you want to split it and all those things do make a and difference. So the next thing now that I want to get into, and uh, we, I've been studying this a lot this year is because you saw that we've been running that um, mesh post wheel. Well, now I want to get into the mesh rail where we can run out a two by two and it's not just a post. And now you kind of got two guys, um, you know, two guys kind of picking and let, getting that running back out, out of there. Um, so now you can run it two by two. And, uh, and so what I like about it, is we're going to keep our number one um, to is either the rail or the number one is to is our out route, and then number two is going to be to our H, and then three is the OTB, um, and then if it was on the other side, it would be one down to our Y, and then now it can go OTB. So now nothing changes for the quarterback is just who, what the number one read is, is you have your rail where you're out. Otherwise it's the mesh into the OTB. So it's once again, it's super simple read for the quarterback. Nothing changes. Um, and what I like to do is these two, and I don't have any film, like I said, is this is one that we're going to do this year because I realized we need to protect mesh post wheel a little bit better. Um, and now this way they think that we're running a post and you saw the middle of the field, this guy should be wide open, but now it also gives us that capability of being able to run it a two by two and not just mesh post wheel where now we can have three guys taking care of the middle of the field. And if it's cloudy, he can either quarterback can either take off or just throw this out to where nobody else can get to it. Um, so our OTB is going to be at 10 yards and he's going to hook up between the linebackers. He's going to show his hands. We work on our mesh drill um, every Wednesday, uh, which the, all the guys will run their outs. They're all going to run their mesh. Um, and as soon as they show their hands, the quarterback knows to throw it to the shoulder, um, the opposite of the color jersey. So if a linebacker's right here, we're throwing it to the inside shoulder. If, if it's the nearest opponent is to the inside, we're going to throw it to the outside. And we work on sitting. We work on running, um, running through, you know, across the, the field um, if they're playing man. And then we also work on, our, like you saw, our expanding and the quarterback's throwing them uh, in a rhythm. Uh, so that's this is our mesh rail. Like I said, I don't really have – um, any film because it's going to be the next thing that we're going to run this year so that we're running a, a couple of different versions of mesh. Now, this is a good one. This is a palm speeder, by the way, Matt, in case yes. you ever want one in your thing. It, um, I mean, it's, this, is, this is what we used to run. Yep. I mean, this no, is I remember the version it. that I'm familiar with. You used to run yeah. every day with the big spot. And mm -hmm. um, especially if you're a palms team, you're a too high team, a quarters team, it sucks because your, your nickel or your overhang is the guy responsible for the wheel here. And then you have two guys crossing him this way. And he's trying to get out that way, plus two coverage guys. So there are four guys that could come across your face as you're trying to get out on the on the rail there. So it's a uh, coach when you get into when you get into this version here, yeah, that Z is going to sit in a window, and that window is going to part like the Red Sea, and it's going to be yeah. right in front of the quarterback's face. Uh, you know, for us, this was a huge third and short to third and medium play for us uh, because no matter which option you take you're going to get those seven to eight yards. Yeah, absolutely. And then, so one reason why I also like this is right now, like when we go, um, we also run snag. And so a lot of the teams see us, this in, this outside guy coming in and then like sitting right here, you know, usually our snag, we're from here and we sit like right here. Well, and then on the back side of our snag is our run, if it's three by one, our Z, like say this was three by one, our Z would run that snag and our running back is actually running. Um, so it's like that two man spot, the two man snag game that you yeah. hear uh, Noel Mazzoni talk about all the time. Well, now we're doing that, but now we're also doing mesh. So now there's three different things that can happen in this little radius. Um, yeah, so it's a way of protecting mesh. Um, it's also, I've always had running backs that were really good receivers and you tell them that they can run a wheel route and they have a chance to make a home run, they're going to run faster than, <laughs> they, you know, than anything. And our quarterbacks like taking that deep shot. Um, 
and it's you know it's it's one of those trending things right now in football you know because just like you said any way you're going to be able to get you know five to eight yards and possibly even more explosive plays you know like you hit this this could be a, a 10 yard route you know this could be a 10 yard gain that's a 10 yard gain and you know this is five to seven yards you know why would you not want that in your playbook Mm -hmm. Matt, this is the the second podcast in a row we've heard Noel Mazzoni. I think we're going to have to get him on, yeah. you know, oh, if we hear him dude. anymore. Dude, he was he had some great concepts in the um, early the 2010s. end zone system, baby. Oh yep, man, he had some great system. concepts. You know, so from. so when I worked at Huddle, I won't make this story too long. I became pretty decent friends with his son. Um, so for a while, I was kind of in that ethos, if you will, and learning Ooh. some of that stuff. Um, have not talked to his son in a very long time, though. Maybe I should reach out. Maybe I should DM him on Twitter, see what he's up to. You know, Noah Mazzoni, I mean, he's just, he's he's awesome. I know that he's, uh, uh, now I forgot the name of the coach, but they're working together. Um, he was at Arkansas Pine Bluff, and now he's up in New Jersey at a private school. Bobby Acosta, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so I know that they're working together. but. So here's another thing is, you know, and I'll, I'm almost done. Um, but another thing that we're going to work on is mesh switch. Um, and for a reason why we're going to do that is we want to be able to get our outside receivers a little bit of love. And also right here, um, this is going to change up what the defense sees because they have never seen our outside guy. They see a bunch of corners um, when we run snag, but they've never seen outside breaking route minus when we run sale. But the difference with sale is what is this guy usually doing? He's usually running a fade. So now when this guy's coming in and this guy's going out and now you have a running back going out, that's going to cause a lot of interference right here. Um, and the defense is going to have to communicate a lot. And now it also protects our two by two mesh, our two by two post wheel, our two by two rail. Now we can really stay balanced in our mesh game. Um, and, you know, and, and I'm not saying that we're, this is going to end up being one of our main plays, but what I, what I like about it is now, like I said, is that H gets that outbreak and route. And it's going to put a lot of strain and it protects our mesh. You know, it's just something maybe one or once or twice a game. Um, it might help us out um, because of them bring, uh, you know, bringing in their defense because we're going to run this a lot of, you know, spread tight or they're going to see his split down because he's going to be part of the mesh. And if that corner comes right here and he, you know, for a second is just watching that mesh cross his face or he's watching his running back. Now all of a sudden this H can, you know, get wide open on like a corner, or, you know, this little corner uh, sale route type ordeal. Um, and then obviously the last one. That I'm gonna now, talk Coach, about. hold on. I'm going to cut you oh. off real quick. So as you went, you know, you just talked about last two plays that are going to be a big focus and emphasis for you. Yes, sir. What leads you to that, right? Obviously, you ran your mesh stuff. You guys like it. You know, at what point did you say, hey, we need to add a couple different variations? Like what prompted you to do that? Is it just like, Hey, I'm a coach and I want to add to it and I want to get better. Or was there a specific situation where you're like, Oh crap, we need an answer for that. Yeah. Um, so I'm really big on expanding what you're good at and like what, uh, what you're very efficient. And so for us is there's four plays for us that are very efficient. It's snag stick mesh and shallow cross. And so I really wanted to make sure that we kept it and, and we keep the quarterbacks, um, progression his training the same and now the variations help protect our main stuff but it's also yeah. stuff that we do well and post wheel is something that when we ran stick post wheel snag post wheel it worked really well mesh post wheel um and so i like to keep it very basic i don't like to have a lot of concepts i don't believe in plays i believe in in concepts and families and so you know for us is you know our, our quick game is stick and snag you know and i put shell cross is kind of a hybrid because the way that we run it it, there's three routes that can be, you know, hit really quick. Um, and then I, I know it's a full field progression and then we run mesh and then we have sail and cross. Y cross has not been that friendly for us. Um, I actually like it a lot more for what's on the front side. You can run two different versions of smash and then you also can run sail with it um, and then fade out. And then we also run sail and we have a really good run game. Um, and then we also have our screen game. And so I just, I don't want to have a bunch of, different concepts it was all right what's our bread and butter okay stick snag mesh and shallow cross what versions or variations have been very popular and successful and does it fit what we do as a team and yeah. is it something that i can feel very good to coach on and is there a reason for us having to do it yeah no i think that's a great answer coach i just i always wonder you know i was a guy who during the off season um spent a lot of time trying to figure out answers and 
I talk about it a lot. One year we got burned by an 11 personnel team. They figured out we did not blitz the tight end. So I spent my entire off season just scavenging how to blitz the tight end better. So I always like to hear other coaches and how they come up with it. Mine is always because of like pure failure. And, uh, and, and I'll tell that joke and I'll be honest on this podcast. Like usually I come up with my best ideas after I get my ass kicked. Hey, and, yeah. Uh, and, and it's the idea of like, well, I don't want that to happen again. That was embarrassing. So I need to go figure out how that doesn't happen. So no, I'm with you. So, um, I had, I was at another school the year before that as the head coach. Um, and I always find the school that doesn't have the big linemen. So I was like, okay, <laughs> what, what can I do to yeah. be successful? And it's all about, you know, gap down backer. So I studied my freaking butt off because I feel very good in the passing game. Like I said, um, five years of college ball, all of them were air raid or spread, ran mesh, shallow cross, stick, snag, all that good stuff. I feel very comfortable with it. But this year I really wanted to expand knowledge and, and teach mesh even better than, than this past year. But the year before I came to Northwood, um, I had never ran buck sweeper power in my life. And so oh, I, now spent, you're speaking Matt's lingo here. Yeah. So I like, dude, I, I honed <laughs> in, I was like, I want to run buck sweep. I want to run power and buck sweep and power end up being huge. And, you know, uh, to our running game, I think we averaged like eight yards per carry on buck sweep. And then we added quarterback power. We added quarterback, buck and jet buck because um i wanted to protect buck but it was it was just like i really always like what was our failure what was our weakness this past year how can we get better um because yeah. our system is the power raid and so i was like there's it doesn't ha- there's not like one silver bullet one thing that's going to cure all it's going to be knowing your program knowing your kids and what fits well together and i just knew that I had to get something on that C gap to the outside. And that's why we did power and, um, and buck sweep. And so, you know, this year has been really focusing on, in on honing down our, the amount of concepts uh, down to, you know, two quick game really, and then having a lot more of our, our drop back. But, you know, we have like six or seven different ways we can run stick um, and a couple yeah. of different ways we can run snag. So it almost equals out to the four concepts. Sorry for that yeah. long answer. No, no quick. coach. Like, that's the stuff that's the best part of this podcast. Don't get me wrong. The X's and O's are great, but the the coaching and how we go through handling problems, I think, is something that a lot of coaches need to hear because I think everybody feels like either sometimes, right, if it's going bad for you, you feel like everybody else is just the grass is greener. And if it's going good for you, you know, then you don't really think about it. But, you know, we all go through our process. Yeah. And it's the finding of the answers, I think, that are the biggest thing. And it's the coaches that are willing to go out and find them and and be humble and go ask people like, Hey, how do you fix this? How do you do this? Because I've been there. I told the story in our second or third podcast, how we kept getting beat by coach Sutherland at Bartram trail. And I showed up to his clinic session. I sat in row one. Um, I asked his permission in case anyone's listening. They're like, what the hell's wrong with that guy? But I sat in row one to learn more about their team. And I was like, you know what? Like we're never going to be able to stop these guys. And spoiler alert, we really didn't stop them too much after that. But I, until we learn exactly what they're doing. So I, I think that's a big part is the process coach. Yeah, no. And so, you know, and being humble. So like I really paid a lot of attention to chip Siegel's, um, YouTube and I bought the big buck, uh, big book of buck. And then, um, you know, Wait, there's Swiss, a big book of buck, Matt, do you own that? I don't, um, you, Hey, you need to get the, that is, that's the priceless. Big and well, the he, he now owes us money for for just uh for promoting it for him. The big <laughs> book of Bach here it is. No, like, and the best part is like once you start reading it, you can just hear Chip just uh, talking it with that you know that deep Southern draw, and it's just awesome. But um, <laughs> I paid attention with like him and then Kenny Simpson, and so a lot of the stuff that Kenny Simpson does with like different formations and does with Buck, I really incorporate to our power rate. Um, because I mean, dude, he's a genius. I mean, he's doing great things. Um, so I kind of, I kind of just mix some of those things in there to, to give us that little, you know, gun T type of a look with our buck sweep. And, um, you know, I just, those are two guys that they ran buck sweep and they, you know, and then I know that Kenny calls it belly and chip is obviously power. So I just really focus on those things because I'd never done it before. So why not go to the people that are good at it yeah. instead of trying to, you know, make it up yourself. I'm just laughing here because Matt is loving the term belly and Pat. Like he is. Love it. I grew up wing tea, right? Yeah, so I, I, I grew, grew up wing tea coach. <laughs> and, and to me, buck sweep is, uh, a, you know, ultimate play for me growing up. And 
as a young coach. That, I mean, you got to run buck sweep. You got to run waggle. And if your offense didn't have it, it was garbage, <laughs> right? That's the way I grew up. So I actually last year had the opportunity to go sit down with uh, Herb Han and Gus Malzahn oh, and wow. talk buck sweep with them. And uh, that was that was amazing to sit down with those guys and, and talk buck sweep in a small setting. Unbelievable. We get Herb Hand on. Let's get him on. Let's do it. Like Herb, we just want to talk buck sweep with you. You were at Vanderbilt with with my brother one time, and you know Matt. Let's do this. So, Coach, sorry, we've been kind of talking no. through some of this stuff. I know you had one concept left. It's one that I really love, and it's kind of yeah. a newbie up there. Absolutely. Uh, the, old, the old mesh traffic, right? Yes, sir. And then I have um, a couple more clips of anybody. Oh wants. no, you're fine. Yeah. Show as much as you want, Coach. We are. Yeah. So with our mesh traffic, um, you'll see we ran this down the red zone. Um, what you're trying to do is, I mean, everybody has seen it. Uh, running back's going to line up, especially because you're down the red zone. Um, and you're playing man, so you probably have a backer on this side with his eyes on the running back. He's thinking you're coming out here past pro. Well, now his eyes have to stay on this running back, and you have one, two, three guys coming into his line of motion. Um, and I know that a lot of teams, they'll do it super mesh to do mesh yep. traffic. But I want to be able to give our quarterback an outlet. Um, yeah. So instead of an out route, you know, throwing that corner to the back of the end zone. Um, so we'll go with a mesh and he's going to go over um, because this X needs to go under. We have our OTB and we have our corner. So then what's the progression? Well, once again, I'm big on making sure that it keeps very uh, familiar with the quarterback and similar. So number one is going to be that corner route. If he sees that he's going to win that matchup, that's going to go be number one. It's going to go number one. And then it's actually number two to this. Tra uh, for the traffic should already be made to the running back by the time he comes off of that. And then you go to the mesh and then your OTB um, is obviously will be your number four. And then don't sleep on this H because something I, I, um, I was listening to Stan Bedwell on that they did a lot uh, down in the red zone, especially if they're in three by one is that they'll actually have him just go now to the end zone. Well, it's now the H will just start <laughs> here. And then he'll cut through back to the uh, corner of the end zone. Now that's so. a terrible play. Nobody run anything where you're when, <laughs> when a guy comes underneath backers and then wheels. It's actually illegal in football. Um, <laughs> now it's yeah. Coach traffic's but, um, been the big thing, right? Michigan threw it yep. um, in one of their big games, um, and then a, a bunch, and then fan. the so. Dolphins threw it in a couple games. Matt, I know that it was covered. It's kind of mm -hmm. you see, it's been the popular thing on Twitter. We, you know, what's Absolutely. made it as a play when Dan Casey covers it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, but no, it's a great play, right? I mean, like offensive guys don't, don't stop coming up with these creative things of like, all right, well, we're going to put the running back in the flat, but we're just going to put them on the other side and really screw with you on it. Yeah. And then I'm trying to think now, oh man, now, now that you said it, I'm trying to think who did it. They were an empty and they did empty. They did orbit. And so the running back, so it was like tight, empty, right. He came in motion to orbit and just then all of a sudden cut to the, that had to be the Dolphins, uh, right? Line. Matt, that had to be the Dolphins, correct? They did it a lot of stuff with – uh, I think the it Dolphins was... did a similar thing with Waddle. They met, were motion <sighs> Waddle and Tyree yeah. Kill to the backfield and doing stuff like that. But I, I yeah. don't know. That could have been someone else. So someone's probably listening like, no, moron, it was this team. But like that feels like such a Dolphins thing to do. Okay, so like right here you saw like if our quarterback was not getting pressured, watch how easy this this is. Just so he's just going to throw the axis here, right? Oh, no. Mind, sorry. Oh, sorry. I thought he was throwing the axis there right away, but he didn't throw it. So No. Yeah, you would think that he had it, but then he just comes back to the running back. And then, so what I was talking about is, um, obviously, this isn't three by one, but it's two by two. But watch what happens. And this is like our sixth or seventh game of the season. And we started seeing this more. Watch how wide open this backside mesh is. I mean, yeah, why the goal line there. there. So, yeah, what's the old? I mean, I feel like I know this play because everybody ran against Florida State where you kind of half roll the quarterback and just throw it back to the tight end or some of that split guy. Like, I feel like every year someone completed that against Florida State in a big game. <laughs> just uh, anyone yeah, else like, who's a Florida State Florida fan State's listening will be like, yeah. Florida State's not a joke anymore. You guys are, are for real oh, now. Oh, shit, coach. Did not you just a joke call anymore. A joke? <laughs> not a joke anymore. <laughs> hey, you guys were. You guys, you guys were struggling there for a while, weren't you? Coach, dim our fighting words on this podcast. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, just being real. Listen, I mean. you know it's it's the ebbs and flows. Um, when I was when I was there as an undergrad, we were 
well, growing up, right, they win two national championships. In the 90s, are just Florida State's a juggernaut. Florida State, Miami, Florida, all good. Yep. I get to college at Florida State. My brother's freshman year, they win a national title. I get there. All three years I'm there, we go six and six. And, um, and you know, it's it's whatever. You're in college, so you're partying. It's fun. And I'm always like, I looked at my buddy, and I said, man, at least I, this this has to come back to us somehow, right? Like, we're going through this. But it has to come back. I go back as an employee. I'm on the recruiting staff in 2014. Um, we're in the midst of winning a national title in 29 straight games, win an ACC title. I get a ring, you know, Jameis, Jalen Ramsey, Derwin James, all those guys. So it came back to me. Then we went back downhill and I was like, look, this has got to come back. I'm hoping this next couple of years is the coming back part. Right? So it's always a, an ebb and flow. Yeah. No, this past year, I mean, dude, Norvell, there are so many things that Florida State did that are, I mean, they were beautiful. Um, you know, they were masters of counter. Um, yeah, Alex Atkins is uh, a dude. If if you're if you're listening to this, <laughs> get on YouTube and just Google Alex Atkins yes. counter tapes. It, it's phenomenal the way they run counter and do all those things. He is. I worked with a guy who's this assistant. Spe- I don't know. He's like an assistant coach. I think he deals with special teams there. His name is Carter Barfield. I worked with him at Mercer. Him and Alex Atkins are good friends. He's been telling me about him for years. And when he got to Florida State, I was like, I hope your buddy's good. And uh, he is. He's very good. So he's that, been that good for the game, Noles. I mean, it was it was beautiful. But um, that's that's what I got for Mesh. Um, yeah. You know, uh, you know, if you guys got any questions or anything, like I'm I'm open book of anything that we got. Yeah. Um. If they if anyone wants to reach out to you on Twitter, your handle is um at Coach M M Johnson. So Coach M.M. M. Johnson, so if you have any questions about Mesh or you want to talk a little bit about the Power Raid, which I love that name, Coach, um, go ahead and reach out to Coach DM, has, DM him. If you are one of our bashful coaches or you want to chat to me and Matt first, uh, you can reach out to us um, on Gmail at the Boardrill Podcast at gmail.com, on Twitter at Boardrill Pod. We're on TikTok. We think we've been shadow banned on TikTok for some reason. So if you could go there and light us up on TikTok, we're, we're at Boardrill Pod. Matt's kind of giving me a look. Matt, do you have something about TikTok? No, no, I was just, no. Yeah, yeah just giving the peace sign. Whatever. Yeah. Oh, uh, no. We're, Final question, we're, coach. Final question. Oh, I'm over here trying to run us off. This is my. You're bad, running coaches. us off the podcast, and we're, we're not done yet. <laughs> I went right in that mode. Also, hold on, hold on, hold on. Before you ask that, hey, I must have bored I wanna, you. My bad. My bad. That's on me. I want to, no, I want to, I want to point something out that, that's been stuck in my head that oh, coach shit. said earlier. You know, I get on these little things that get stuck in my head and I can't get rid of it. <laughs> he was talking about, point. yeah, he was talking about having, you know, a running back that could also play a tight end and he dropped the 10 and a half personnel on me. Yeah, the 10 and a half know, personnel. Between 10 and 11, a 10 and a half personnel. <laughs> I, I love that, coach. I think that's going to stick with me. I just, okay. you offensive guys and the crap you come up with. You're 11 <laughs> personnel. Stop it. No. All right, Coach, so uh, before I go back, uh, we're going to have to redo the contact piece there. We always ask everybody one question. I don't know if you've listened, but you probably heard it. If you haven't, here it comes. All right. Coach, what is the one thing that your program does that's unique or different that no other program does or not many out there do? Ooh. It's always a good one. We give people time to think about it. It doesn't have to be a football thing. can be a culture thing. can be whatever. But we ask every coach this, so this is what we're looking for. This is when we put you on the spot, right? Put the the fire to your feet. Um, so I don't think that everybody does it, but almost every program I've been a part of, I try to bring in a military piece with being an army brat. Um, so this past year, I had my dad who served for twenty one years, um, and was in special forces. He went over to Iraq, Afghanistan, multiple times. Um, came and spoke to our guys about about leadership. Um, and I also we always do one award at the end of the year where it's the special forces award, where it's just the guy that gives everything, plays almost every position or does something. Um, so that's one thing I try to do. Uh, you know, I was, even though I wasn't in the military, um, I looked up to a lot of guys lost, you know, I have a lot of heroes, not just my dad. Um, and because I really think that the military, you know, and me, I, I have more experience with the army. I mean, there's yeah. no better team, you know, there's no better team and no better way of, you know, it's more of, um, we than me and it's not about I type stuff and so that's one of the things that I feel like being able to have success in, mo- in multiple places is I break that down is you know break down the the I, the I guys and and really focus on our team as a whole and I, so I try to bring that army of that military motto to our guys because um, a lot of them might not have ever been around it or experienced it and for me 
I was lucky to have my dad and been around that uh, special forces world. And um, so I guess that's one thing that I think would definitely be unique because I don't know how many people can say or do that as much. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a cool thing. Uh, a lot of people tell you I read a lot of Navy SEAL books, uh, leadership books, things like that. Um, and a lot of them come from the military because, right, that's some of the best leadership that's ever been on the face of this earth. Sir. Um, I taught history, so I go even to the old World War II tactical books and all that stuff. And so I'm a, I'm a total nerd on that. Matt's a math guy, so he's a bigger nerd. So, <laughs> um, Coach, I love it. Great answer. Um, so real quick again, just if you want to reach out to Coach, it was Coach M.M. Johnson at, on Twitter. Again, if you want to reach out to us, it's at Bordro Pod on uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. Again, get us on Shadow Band on TikTok or however we do it. Um, people are probably laughing at us as I say that. Coach, thank you uh, from the bottom of our hearts for coming on. We really appreciate you and hope you have a great night. Thank you. I appreciate you guys. Um, and I'm going to continue to to promote you guys as much. This was a great <laughs> podcast, and I love listening to your guys' stuff. So appreciate y'all. We appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. Thank you.